Forbes India and HSBC present HSBC Golf League. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Golf League presented by Forbes India and HSBC. I am Mukdha Kalra, your host, and today we are in Hyderabad, the city of Nizams, for the third regional round of the HSBC Golf League. Amidst this eclectic mix of historical Hyderabadi splendor and electrifying modern energy of the city, we have gathered at the Boulder Hills Golf and Country Club. Here, golf enthusiasts are ready to showcase their skill and spirit on these lush greens. Let's dive into a day of compelling golf where competition and sportsmanship come alive. In India, HSBC has been around for 170 years. We are very committed to the growth of India, to the growth of Indians around the world. Over the last 170 years, we've been part of every milestone in India. We've been doubling down our investment in wealth and personal banking. We launched the private bank in July. The Golf League is a wonderful integration with our launch of private bank, with our focus on wealth. It connects HSBC with golf lovers, but it also allows a bunch of golf lovers to connect with the game and with, with us. The third stop for the HSBC Golf League was Hyderabad. Hosted at the renowned Boulder Hills Golf and Country Club, This regional round witnessed both business luminaries and budding golfers acing the greens while forging new collaborations in business and sport. I'm now joined by two industry leaders and avid golfers here in Hyderabad, Director and Senior Consultant Apollo Cancer Hospital Hyderabad, Dr. P. Vijayan Reddy, and Global Head of the Global Business Solutions and Corporate Centers here at Novartis, Naveen Gullapalli. Naveen, let me start with you. Uh, you're a Hyderabad boy. You have grown up here. Uh, when did you start playing golf? And uh, what do you think of the golf course Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, I've been playing golf for a very long time. I'm quite embarrassed to admit looking at my handicap, but it's been a very long time. Yeah. And Hyderabad is blessed with two really nice courses that are right. pretty close by. This is an amazing course. It's a great uh, place to come out, be in nature and have a good time. Dr. Reddy, uh, I'm told uh, you have quite a track record with not one, but three hole in one uh, shots. Uh, and uh, your uh, golfing exploits are... Uh, quite famous. So when did you start playing? I just started golf as an accident. Mm -hmm. One of my patient uh, uh, husband uh, was a coach here in uh, Boulder Hills, oh, Mr. Lovely. John, and he said, uh, we want to do something for your charity. So I, ho I have a foundation called Cure Foundation, which helps the uh, children who are I'm suffering sorry. with cancer. Yeah. So those children are taken care under foundation. And that uh, when we did the first uh, tournament, they said, you don't play, but you are conducting a tournament. So then that uh, stimulated, the triggered me and stimula <laughs> stimulated me to start golfing. And I'm happy, very, very happy that I joined golf. Wonderful. Let me talk uh, about your industries and look at 2024. Uh, you spoke about uh, pediatric cancer, sir, and you spoke about uh, young children uh, uh, and your foundation working with them. We are seeing a rise both in pediatric cancer and also in under 50 cancer in India. Uh, why India? If you look at the statistics of the Indian population, Indian population is also is growing. Yeah. So from 12 to 14 lakhs, is I don't think it's really mm -hmm. rise in the increase. But nevertheless, yes, the awareness has gone up. Right. Uh, number of patients coming for the treatment. Earlier, it was uh, uh, not taken so seriously. Now people are coming in early stages. Right. Awareness has increased and that's definitely incidence as well as the awareness and the diagnosis have increased. Naveen, uh, talking about your industry, global capability centers are uh, coming to India and um, uh, some of the very big companies have found their epicenters here. What trends do you see in your industry in the coming year? Yeah, absolutely. So Novartis, uh, as you know, is one of the significant research-based uh, pharmaceutical company that uh, we, we invent new medicines to improve and extend lives. Uh, nearly 10% of our global headcount is actually based in India, and that's oh, wow. a very significant thing. All our colleagues in India really work towards improving, discovering molecules and bringing them to patients, really. So it's mm -hmm. a significant 
footprint that we have. Um, a lot of this is happening because we have very strong scientific, operational, technology, data, data science, and now artificial intelligence skills sure. in this country. So we bring that to this company at a global scale from here. And this trend is going to continue because medicine itself and several areas like marketing, etc., are also becoming technology-led, data-led, sure. AI-led. Right. So the potential now for us to converge all of this and make a significant impact to our purpose is enormous, hmm. actually. So with leaders around, you know, who are working round the clock in these edgy times where you have to show up, where you have to keep up with tech, where you have to keep up with the, the demands of uh, uh, your work. Uh, what do you suggest to leaders? Uh, can there ever be a work-life balance? Can they actually come out to play golf often? You always preach when we, before <laughs> I practice, I preach. I keep telling in all my lectures how to prevent cancers. Wherever I travel in the airport, they keep asking me why am I developing cancer? Why these people are developing cancer? purely on the westernization, unfortunately. Oh, okay. The incidence of bre breast cancer was quite low, third, fourth in our country. Now it is top. Mm. Colonic cancer, which was somewhere in seven, eight, right. as now it's on the top. As you rightly said, the youngsters are getting more cancers in our country compared to the other. So that is all purely on the lifestyle changes. I think work-life balance is very important. Naveen, yes. I would want to know from you, uh, what kind of a work culture do you see at Novartis and what kind of work culture do you also uh, ask people to uh, maintain and follow when it yeah. comes to work-life balance at work? Because what leaders do automatically, everybody Absolutely. sort of follows. No, uh, I think it's super important to have a healthy balance. I know for us especially because we work with the rest of the world, so uh, our culture allows us to really, um, you know, holistically nice uh, mm -hmm. develop. We are flexible. We have hybrid working. So you don't really have to come to office every day. You have to find a balance between office and home, etc. So we do several things that uh, promote. We are one of the only companies that have paternal leave, for example. So oh, we allow uh, any parent take the time to invest the time uh, at some really uh, fantastic times in their family, etc. Right. So. So we do a lot of these things to ensure we are an associate uh, focused company, mm. employee focused company. So we take a lot of effort to ensure that our associates are very healthy. What do you think about golfing leagues such as this one? HSBC has organized this, leaders have come here. Um, it's actually a great platform uh, because work also happens and networking happens and also sport happens. So what do you think about uh, this and do you foresee a lot of networking with uh, even middle management happening on sporting, uh, you know, sporting places uh, and uh, facilities? So for personally, hmm. you know, I, I, I was a, I would say a frog in the well. I was just working in my office. <laughs> so I feel so good uh, after joining this golf. It's really an amazing game and it teaches you so much in life and I would say it simulates your life. Naveen, what do you have to say about this uh, sporting league today? Uh, absolutely. It's great. Uh, thanks to HSBC for organizing this league. Actually, it's a great platform to bring together like-minded people. Uh, golf, as doctor was saying, is a microcosm of life. And the experiences that this game puts you through uh, is really uh, uh, something that you enjoy, you cherish with a bunch of people who become your friends because yeah. of that reason. So I think the friendships forged in golf stay for a long time. Fantastic. So it's really nice to have this platform to meet people and go through this experience. Fantastic. Now have a wonderful day and uh, go kill it. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you so Thank much. you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. The Hyderabad Round. What a magnificent blend of grit and grace. With the spotlight shining on Hitashi Bakshi as she claimed victory in the fiercely competitive Pro Pool category. And K. Harishwar Reddy, who was declared the winner of the 19 to 24 handicap category. Events like HSBC Golf League gives an opportunity for all the leaders and entrepreneurs and senior management across the industries to come together and play and interact. And this interaction will be really helpful within the sector so that we will know the new trends and new technologies within the sector so that each one can learn from others. So when it comes to across the sector, you can leverage different sector opportunities also. HSBC has been eager to grow in India 
and uh, you've been noticing that we've been investing quite significantly in the market in terms of you know, new products, new proposition. And one of the ways for us to reach out to our customers, you know, there are various things that we do in sporting activities, but one of the things that we've seen is that golfing as a community is increasing in India and more so with our customers and there was no better way to connect with them. So that's the ethos under which we're trying to bring golfing, we're trying to promote golfing, but also trying to encourage our customers to associate and play with us in a couple of tournaments that we're rolling out. What an extraordinary display of golf we have witnessed in Hyderabad today. Precision, power and passion have defined today's rounds. But hold your breath, there's more to come. Stay tuned as we continue the golfing saga after this short break. More thrills, more corporate insights, more golf coming right up. Forbes India and HSBC present HSBC Golf League. Welcome back to the Golf League presented by Forbes India and HSBC. Well, the stakes are high and the excitement palpable. We are at Mumbai's iconic Willingdon Sports Club. It's a lovely day today where skill, strategy and nerves of steel will clash in this ultimate golfing showdown. Join us as we witness the pinnacle of golfing mastery in the city that never sleeps. <laughs> HSBC Golf League was envisaged with the view of engaging with the right target segment. Uh, we wanted uh, a more long-term strategic initiative to participate and network, provide a networking platform uh, for our uh, customers, prospects. I'm glad it is turning out to be a big platform where like-minded individuals come, have a nice time, play, network and new business ideas originate uh, and that's what uh, HSBC stands for. With the Willingdon Sports Club playing host to the regional round. Titans from business and sport clashed in a dazzling display of golfing excellence set against the city's iconic skyline. Well, joining us now, two distinguished guests and avid golfers here in Mumbai, Senior Counsel of High Court of Mumbai, Pradeep Sanjeti Sahab and former APAC Head of Distribution for Franklin Tempton, Vivek Kudwa. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Uh, Pradeep, sir, I would definitely want to uh, clarify something from you, which is that the number of golf shows that I have seen on television and on OTT platforms, I have seen every lawyer has a has a, a putting uh, green mat in their office do you have one in the office i have one at my residence in goa <laughs> 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 and how long have you been playing golf for ah uh, good 15 16 years now wow yes yeah i always wonder how leaders especially in bombay make time for golf <laughs> how much time do you take to get to the golf course from your residence first tell me that <laughs> so right now i play between chembur and willingdon right. So yeah. Willingdon is a 10 minute drive in the morning Yeah. and uh, even Chambur is just 20-25 minutes in the morning. The return trip is <laughs> depends on the vagaries of the traffic. What ignited the passion? Well, you know, I used to be a good sportsman playing many different sports mm -hmm. and uh, early on I, rec I realized in golf, uh, in, you know, in my life that golf was one of those games where really you are battling against yourself, right? Mm. You, it's not a game that you're playing with someone else. You're playing with someone else on the course, that's right. But your outcomes hmm. depend on how you hit the ball, not how the other guy hit the right. ball. Yes. Uh, looking at 2024 and your respective industries, um, when we talk about um, the advent of generative AI, all the technologies that are coming, the data privacy bill is coming, uh, there is so much tech development, etc. We are seeing regulatory frameworks also struggling to mm. keep up with these developments. How do you see the legal outlook to all the development that is happening? And how can legal frameworks actually make it easier for the businesses to thrive? Mm, it's all happening simultaneously, I must mm -hmm. tell you talking purely in law, be it documentation, agreements, be it arguments in court, be it briefs, a lot of AI off late and before that a lot of software including legal research, 
including preparation of matters because you know in, with one touch with one key you can get right. all the data and the output that finally really matters i was doing some uh, very big constitutional matter two years back and we had thousand pages of report and we had to demolish it and we had to show that it's all fudged in statistics and we were able to do it because there were two mba professors helping me uh -huh. to show how this has gone wrong so law is all not in abstract it comes from some field or the other um Vivek, uh, looking at your industry, um, I have been speaking to a lot of leaders and everybody is very bullish about the Indian growth story in the next five years, uh, which is also sort of uh, manifesting when people are buying uh, in the, uh, and they're uh, buying equities, they're getting into mutual funds, the mutual fund market is absolutely bursting. Um, do you see this momentum carry forward for the next five years? and? What would you uh, what would you say are the reasons for this sudden uh, sort of pivot? Well, it's not a sudden pivot. We've been working on it for years. <laughs> if you look at uh, today, uh, you know, for the first time, India is not dependent on FPI flows only for the equity market, mm -hmm. you know, to perform, because SIPs are generating about eighteen thousand crores per month Absolutely. in throughput. All of it going into equity. So there you're talking about two lakh ten thousand, two lakh fifteen thousand crores a year right you know if you look at it what the figure was 10 10 years ago it was not much okay away from uh, the business uh, leadership yeah uh, leadership is something i want to speak to both of you about uh, how has golf uh, influenced you being as a leader now for last about 15 years that i practice as a senior so, so in most matters we have a team of lawyers right uh, in some we are about a team of 10 12 people like last month and the month before, I was doing two matters with a team of about 15 people. Oh, wow. So, yes, you need leadership, you need coordination, you need cohesion. And uh, if you connect with golf, you know something like handicaps that we know in golf? Yes. You may be very good with zero handicap or two handicap. I may be 15, he may be 10, right? You have to take your team along. You have to make everybody work. You have to take output from everybody. And nobody should feel that he's in any way different from the other, right? You give them their handicaps, you judge their handicaps and you play with them at their level. How that's lovely, how it works. How wonderful. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a great golf analogy that we have got from you. <laughs> Vivek, as a leader today, uh, leaders are facing a challenge when it comes to uh, handling very young people the middle management and of course the ones who come with a wealth of wisdom uh, but have very different working styles from those who are coming in. Uh, as a leader, how does one handle this age bracket which perhaps is starting from 25 and going all the way up to 55, 58? So I think, uh, I think you have to take people by firstly listening to them, hmm. right? Because you have to listen and we have to become better listeners. So as a CEO, you have to become a better listener. You're, that's why. Second thing is, after listening, you have to take decisions. Hmm. Right? Because people look to leaders to take decisions. All decisions may or may not be good, may not have the outcome desired, right. and may not be what people are looking for. Right? But you still have to take them. So it means you have to commit. So leaders have to commit and leaders have to commit and leaders have to demonstrate by personal, their personal behavior and personal way they do things. Right. Uh, they, they become a role, uh, they become a role model. Um, before I let you go, I just want to know what do you think about golf leagues like the one that HSBC has organized and really how does at the corporate level and at a professional level, does it help in keeping that work-life balance while networking uh, as well? Our city, in a city like Mumbai, if you get to come here for two hours in the morning, your day is made, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, True. Yeah, yeah. And networking, yes, we all know about it. They say as you walk on the course, a lot of things happen. Yes. Right? <laughs> like if I met him today, maybe things work. <laughs> I think, you know, uh, golf does that. You spend quality time with people and you get to know them well. The bonding and, is yeah, different. And we have a, a golf you know, group, then about 18, 20 people. We had started it many years ago and we go once a year, we go overseas and all. 
now the wives have become close to each other the you know guys meet regularly so fantastic i mean you know you have friendships and you know those are just well. kind of yeah. casual friendships or you have these kind of friendships where you meet right. several times in a month in a year so you know, so i think it's fantastic for that lovely gentlemen have a wonderful day at the course today and uh, have a good game and thank you so much for giving thanks us your you. time thanks thank to you thanks to you for thank giving you. us thank you for your time As the Mumbai round of the HSBC Golf League reached its thrilling conclusion, it marked the end of another memorable chapter in this league. Securing the title in the Pro Pool category was Nishna Patel, and Lavanya Agarwal took home the honors in the 19 to 24 handicap category. Their victories symbolize the spirit and passion that define the HSBC Golf League. The HSBC Golf League brings together professionals from a diverse, uh, you know, background. It really helps in um, understanding, you know, their sectors um, and sharing some ideas that you might have, if, um, and see if if there's something that clicks or materializes. Uh, you know, you have uh, the passion of golf. in common and you can happily spend another 4 5 hours fleshing that out congratulations to the exceptional golfers who have triumphed in the regional rounds of this year's hsbc golf league as they advance to the grand finale we eagerly await to see who will be crowned the ultimate champion join us next time for the grand conclusion of this extraordinary journey until then from the heart of mumbai thank you for watching and goodbye Forbes India and HSBC present HSBC Golf League